In honor of the five year anniversary of that sounds so long. Yeah, we've been engaged for over five years now. <laughs> and because you guys so heavily on our Instagram, shout out to our Instagram family, we asked if you guys would want to hear the story and it was an overwhelming yes. So how do we want to start? So it started when you went to uh, Europe with your family. We'd been dating right before I left for Europe. We went ring shopping the day that I left for Europe mm -hmm. for three weeks yeah, with we my went, family. We went to, well, we went a couple places, but we went to this one place checked out the rings, you saw one you liked, and then I took you to the airport. And I didn't think of this ring shopping as like ring shopping. I thought that it was just like fun. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, let's do it. Cause we had lunch right next door. Yeah. So we had lunch next door and then we were just like on a whim. We're just like, oh, let's just go check out the ring store next door. Mm -hmm. And for like an hour before I had to leave for my flight, we just tried on rings. How long were you in there? Europe, two weeks? Three. Three weeks. So he dropped me off at the airport and I left for Europe for three weeks with my family. And uh, of course, I didn't tell her any of this. So I dropped her off at the airport, didn't even go home, went straight back to the ring shop and bought the ring, like immediately. I had to sit there with the ring for three weeks, sitting on my desk. I had it open. But also, wait, this is a really, really cute thing. Like I knew we wanted to get married, but I didn't know that we were shopping for the ring. And so I wasn't like, this is the kind I like. And this is, I wasn't giving no, him any of that. No, she was super sweet. And, and he was just paying attention to which one I kept putting back on my finger. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Focus on my don't, ring. Don't let your face in front of it because it's gonna okay. grab your face. Look so it. block your face. <laughs> My ring's so pretty. I've literally never seen another ring that I like more than mine. Anyways, good ring. Back, to, back to the story. So during the whole time she was in Europe, we had FaceTime just about every day. I would set the ring down like on my keyboard, on my laptop while I'm talking to her. And obviously she can't see it because the camera's, camera's not pointing at it. But I'm just talking to her, FaceTiming her with a ring sitting right underneath your face. Yeah. And because the time difference is so much, whenever he was working, like I'd be going to bed when you were on break at work during the day mm -hmm. and I, you know the like saying absence makes the heart grow fonder. I just like, as soon as I was gone and we were separated from each other, it was a very solidifying like, yep, I wanna marry him. Like I've never been more in love <laughs> and I just can't be without him. So much so that we were in Switzerland, my family was going on day trips and I couldn't leave the hotel home you were staying in because I wouldn't have Wi-Fi to FaceTime him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like my family would be like, oh, remember when we went to this place? I'm like, I wasn't there. I was in the hotel room FaceTiming here. <laughs> <laughs> So while she was gone, she was getting back like the 3rd of July or maybe the 2nd of yeah, July. I got back. And in Utah, you can buy fireworks anywhere. So I knew I wanted to propose on the 4th of July with all the fireworks. And there's a big one that happens at BYU Stadium called Stadium of Fire. It's these massive fireworks and BYU is right next to a mountain. So I'm like, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find a private place on the mountain where we can watch the fireworks all alone and see this massive stadium of fire presentation and I'm gonna propose during the finale. I went up with my cousin Chris and we're walking around and we're like, oh, here's a cool place. Oh, there's, but there's gonna be a million people here. Oh, here's a cool place. Oh, there's gonna be a million people here. It's like a super popular place to watch these. And we found like this empty lot and I looked across this canyon and I saw like this empty cliff overlooking the entire valley. And I was like, if we can figure out how to get there, that's the spot. We found like this no trespassing sign and we walked like three blocks this way around and walked back through like weeds that were literally up to here, like trudged through them yeah. and found the spot, realized it was private property. So I went in and I knocked on the door of the people that own the place and I said, hey, I'd like to propose to my girlfriend in that little cliff behind your place. Can I do that? And they were like, sure. I had three weeks to prep for this. Okay. For this, okay. for this proposal. Okay. I brought a shovel and I dug out a massive patch out of these we weeds. That. Like pulled them out so we had this, oh and then I dug up the dirt for like a foot down so it was soft. I like, what do you call it? Till, I tilled the soil <laughs> so that we would have a soft place to sit and watch these fireworks. I laid down a blanket. I got Martinelli's because we don't drink so we got sparkling cider. Fast, Fast forward. forward. Fast this forward. This is where I have, I have something to say now again. Harris picks me up from the airport on the third and then on the fourth. It was like very like low key. I made you dinner, which I usually did when we were dating. And I was like, oh, like I'll just make dinner. And you were like, yeah, let's just check. Like let's, let's go to the fireworks tonight. So I was like, okay. So Harry's is the most calm, collected person I know. Like he's just a, like a flat line in the best way. That just like, he's not riled up or excitable. Anyways, and I was making him dinner. I like took my time, made this wonderful spread and we're like eating. And then he's like, okay, like 
fireworks are starting soon and he's like being all antsy and I should have like known but I really had no idea that it was coming because I was like we haven't even gone in my mind we hadn't even gone ring shopping like legitimately we hadn't been dating that long so I didn't think we we're actually gonna get engaged anytime soon I thought we were all just being like cutesy and then I like took my sweet time getting ready and like looking cute and Harry's was like the whole time for like an hour while I'm just like getting ready and curling my hair and like in the other room and he's in like the living room waiting for me while I'm getting ready my bedroom he's like okay we really have to go the fireworks are gonna start like hey guys how much longer and he was being so we antsy. had plans and but, like, you were not normally, being very normally he'd be like, of those plans but normally you would be like I don't care like whatever you know you were just so laid back and it was like what is his deal like it wasn't that obvious but I was like he's being weird we drove to the fireworks mm -hmm. and the traffic was horrible mm -hmm. because we then, were late <laughs> So we had to park at the bottom so, of the So like a hill that I'm not kidding you like felt like it was like Whatever degree this is it was like straight up it felt like and I was wearing like a skirt and like not good walking shoes and We get out of the car and he's like okay. It's up, up here this way and it's like houses. It's like a private area It's not like it's a residential area. I'm like mm -hmm. what are we doing? And if you book off in front of me and you're like, come on. I, I was holding your hand. No, you weren't. <laughs> you oh. just took off in front of me and I was like, what? And you're like speed walking up the mountain. I'm like, okay. Let's go, we got some places to be. And then like after, you know, a couple minutes, we trudge up to the top where like, it's this overlook that has like- Yeah, it was the end of like a cul-de-sac. And then it's gated off and there's a massive crowd of people like, all there to watch the fireworks at the same time. Big old no trespassing sign. And sure enough, Harris just forges through everyone and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I, there were so many times that if I had had any thought in my mind that we were getting married, it would have been so blatantly obvious, but there was like no way we were getting engaged that soon in my mind because we hadn't been dating that long. And I just didn't think it was happening. And so I was like, why is it being crazy about these stupid fart works? <laughs> and so I was like low key annoyed. Did you hear fart works? I heard fart works. So anyway. Harris is like forging <laughs> through the group of people and people are like, like annoyed that he's like pushing past people that are all in line to like see these fireworks. And then hops over the no trespassing fence. I heard someone say, can you do that? You jumped over and I remember thinking like, we can't do this. I think I said, I was like, Harris, this is no trespassing. And you're like, it's fine. Yeah, I did. Cause yeah, definitely, I remember because I was like, don't worry about it. We're good. You're like, don't worry about it. It's fine. And I was like, do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I promise you we're good. And so I hop over the fence in my skirt and I'm like, tr and then we get on the other side of the fence and then it's literally like a cliff side where no one is. And he sure enough, it's like going through the Serengeti I really of like is. these tall weeds. I was like following him through these weeds and they're like scratching up my legs mm -hmm. and like all this stuff. And I was, I wasn't like high key annoyed. I was just low key annoyed <laughs> because I was getting scratched. I was sweaty from hiking up that hill by myself. <laughs> and you're being- None of this would've happened if and you were being, Yeah, true. If I hadn't been late, it would've been all good, but I was late, so Harris was on one. It wasn't that bad. It was just very out of character. Sure enough, we just like turn a corner or something, and then all of a sudden we're out in this like cleared out patch mm -hmm. on like the edge of a cliff with like a blanket and- Martinelli's, Martinelli's and flowers. And flowers. And again, I should have known because that's not a normal thing. But in my mind, I was like, wow, he just like went all out for 4th of July. Okay, I need to tell this next part. <laughs> this part's important because you need to understand what I was thinking. I had like a whole like, not like rote thing I was gonna say, but I had like some details I wanted to talk about during my proposal. So we're sitting down, the fireworks start, and I wanted to propose during the big finale, but man, they went on, they started like 30 minutes late, luckily. And they just kept going and going, and I'm sitting there with a ring in my pocket, and I'm just like dying. And finally I was like- Also, my head was on his shoulder watching the fireworks like this, and I could feel his heartbeat through his shoulder. <laughs> which is what happened the first time he kissed me, is which mm -hmm. we haven't told that story is that like your heartbeat was so hard that I could feel it. And once again, had I had any clue, I would have known. You would have been dead giveaway so many times that you were proposing. But I was just like, there was no way that you were proposing. Like, I just thought that maybe you're excited about the fireworks. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Um, so that so, explains why what what he's about to we say. Pick up there sometime and see what the we cliff should. looks like. We anyway, should. so we're sitting down. The fireworks are going. I'm dying on the inside, and I say, "Screw it! I'm just gonna do it." So. Uh, I start talking and I start saying some really romantic things. Mm -hmm. Things like, I remember talking about a path. Like, we've been on this path together for a while and it's it's really made me happy. And you would interject. So yeah, I've really been enjoying dating you too. And I'm like, okay, let, let me talk. <laughs> and I would talk for another five seconds and you would say, yeah, this has been really great. You, you'd throw in another opinion and be like, Okay, stop. Like, I'm in the middle. Let me talk here. <laughs> I think you interrupted me at least three times. And I finally had to be like, Kenzie, let me talk. Don't interrupt me anymore. <laughs> yeah, and that was the moment that all of a sudden I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> What's happening here? It happened way too late. Like, it clicked way too late. And I, I wanted to get on one knee, but we were sitting down next to each other. And in my mind, I was like, I can't do anything weird. I can't, like, get on one knee. I, it's, it'd be, I have to like shift myself to one knee and she'd know what's happening. And it was just all in my mind, like this is way, I made it way too complicated. And I never do that. Well, Once again though, all of this in like a millisecond, all of a sudden starts to click when he's like, Kenzie, just let me talk. <laughs> Which again, not his character. And then I, was I like, wish I could remember and then what I, was I like, said. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, something's happening. Something, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then you weren't kneeling. So I was like, maybe, no. What's happening? I mean, I knew she was gonna say yes. We'd talked about it before and we went ring shopping. So it's not like she was gonna say no. I didn't know we went ring shopping. I thought we went ring browsing. We went ring browsing at like <laughs> five stores. <laughs> for fun, cause it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys don't go ring shopping for fun. Anyway, I propose, I pull out the ring and I ask her to marry me. And she says yes. And I have a friend, this videographer, his name is Todd. He did a bunch of videos with me together. The most opposite of me, just wow. Like he brought his girlfriend and they'd been hiding in the weeds for like 45 minutes. The whole time we were watching just fireworks, they were hiding like 20 feet away in the brush. And the moment I propose, we get maybe a good five, ten. by the way, Todd is the greatest person in the world. I get the proposal out. We have like five, ten seconds, and Todd and his girlfriend are like, ah, bust out the big thing. <laughs> like, whoa, yeah, I forgot you were there. Yeah, we're engaged. Yeah. And he brought like a light with him, and like his girlfriend's holding lights, and he's taking pictures, and we'll we'll share some of the pictures. They're on the, the screen. most awkward pictures of us. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we've aged well in the past. Like our too. style's gotten better. Mm -hmm. We don't look like little babies. But yeah. That's our that's our engagement. And story. the rest is history. And she, since then, Kenzie has dropped her ring down the drain. Oh please! We're gonna talk has... about losing rings. You've lost three. Yeah, in but mine are like twenty years. bucks. Yeah, I know. But I still. can lose a hundred of these, and I'm still. I haven't lost mine. I haven't lost mine. So we know what story we're telling you guys next. Let us know in the comments below. The chaser becomes the chasey. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below what uh, story of ours you want to hear next. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm. Bye.